Are you a pathetic, worthless punk? Because I'd ask them, this character's a bit over the top, isn't he? And they'd say, no, 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 we've got a friend who, who works in the city. And that their boss comes out on the Friday and goes, all right, you drones, nobody's done anything. I want to have <laughs> expletive, expletive, slams the door. Because I'm the big man and you're a shit heel. And I think, okay, well then, Johnson's quite tame. What's the first film you remember watching? The first film I ever saw in colour was The Wizard of Oz projected onto my infant school wall and I have never forgotten it. I'm a child of the 70s so we had black and white TVs. The moment it turns from black and white to colour was like one of the most magical things. But I was also terrified of the flying monkeys and the witch and um, it was the most gripping thing I'd ever seen, let alone the, the actual story. A classic. What about a performance that inspired you to work in the biz? A man called Victor Romero Evans. Victor was in a thing called No Problem. And No Problem was made by the Black Theatre Cooperative and Channel 4. It was a sitcom about kids whose parents had gone back to the Caribbean and they were left to their own devices. But just to see, this would have been early, early 80s, a black person who was like just a little bit older than me doing that on screen, being so funny. Was that a long distance phone call she just made? Tootin, tootin back. <laughs> It's one of those things, if you've always had something um, available to you and available to people like you, you just walk into it and it's like, hey, there it is. But if it's something that you go, well, we're just not part of it, and then you suddenly go, oh, hang on, you're just like me. Wow. Then you suddenly think, oh, well, then it is possible, and you stop thinking about it as being a strange thing. I'd seen it, and now I could be it. They're the old cliche. What's the best film scene ever made? It's from Wings of Desire, <laughs> which is a Vin Vendors film. Somebody took me to see this and I just sort of sat there dutifully and this film starts. And these beautiful people who are angels, who listen to people speaking their thoughts, with such a beautiful sort of transcendent idea that somebody could be on the tube and there's somebody just leaning on them very gently, listening to them worry about their mother or their sister, worry about their finances, but just listening. And that, it was just, a, it's a beautiful, beautiful sequence. Bruno Gantz, uh, who's the main character in that is sublime. The late, great Bruno Gantz. Is there a me memorable moment you have from being on set? Wonderful noodle in this movie is played by Kyla Lane, who is an African-American actor, about 12 years old. And at one point, Matt Lucas and I began to explain to her that her name was very similar to Carla Lane, who was a British sitcom writer. She wrote Bread. I don't know. This is a sort of, you know, the take on money, plus we needed it, plus they were poor people. And Still no. I started internally weeping at <laughs> explaining to this child who Carla Lane was. She was very polite and just nodded at us, but it made me howl inside. Hopefully you planted a seed. I don't think so, no. I think she just <laughs> thought we were two old men talking about obscure things, Fair which enough. we were. Can I ask what your favourite line from a film is? Um, Tootsie. It's one of my favourite films, I've probably seen it about 100. My sister was obsessed with it, so we watched it about 50 times. Right at the beginning where Dustin Hoffman, you know, he's auditioning and they're going, hey, we're looking for uh, somebody tall. Like, I can be tall. And we're looking for somebody bigger. I can be bigger. We're looking for somebody else. And it's just something about the way that worked, that sequence. I've, I've never forgotten that. And I've obviously cried with laughter the first time I heard it. I'm a huge fan of Peep Show. Grand. There's some pretty iconic quotes from your character in there. They are any repeatable? Is it, can we? No. Maybe one or two. Say it. I've got a 32 inch plasma in mine. You get a document up on that baby and you- You're seriously looking at that document. No, that's right. Stick it up your dojo. Yeah. Call me alarm, Mark. It's just Tai Chi. Should take 45 minutes. I'm done in 10. Stick that up your dojo. <laughs> Great. Do you know what? I'm really pleased that some character that I played is remembered so long after we finished it mm -hmm. and with such affection and that there's a whole new generation who are catching it and I'm thinking this thing's never going to end. Also they knew people because I'd ask them, this character's a bit over the top isn't he? And they'd say no 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 we've got a friend who, who works in the city and that their boss comes out on the Friday and goes all right you drones. Are you a pathetic worthless punk? Nobody's done anything. I want to have <laughs> expletive expletive slams the door and I think Okay, well then, Johnson's quite tame. Yeah, I was like, it's a character bit, and then when I got my first job, I was like, oh, <laughs> Johnson is real. <laughs> yeah. But imagine thousands of actors, thousands of characters that we've had, that somebody remembers on one character, and not only that, can quote you. <laughs> like, I'd rest, you can put it on the gravestone, it's all, that's cool, <laughs> it's cool. That was the correct answer. I'm an old man, and my career's been very long. <laughs> so in 1972, 